one desire or one thought that I have that is not motivated by the super soul within my heart. He said, I am, com I am in complete union with the super soul. So when Prabhupada was, he had two heart attacks. Can you imagine? At the age of, how old was Srila Prabhupada when he was on that boat? He had to be 70. Over 70, 70. And what happened was, and there's a painting in the Jagannath temple about about three kilometers away from the Krishnabhavan temple. And that painting is depicted, it's a depiction showing Srila Prabhupada lying down in the Jaladuta boat and Krishna is massaging his heart. And that actually happened. How else could Prabhupada go on? Can you imagine? Seasickness. Has anyone had seasickness here? What's it like? It's just horrible, isn't it? It's just debilitating. Even when there's no more to come up, <coughs> you just your body is in automatic mode. It one is heaving, hoping there's something more, and you feel weakened, right? Very, very weak. And then on top of that, just 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 alone, this uh, seasickness. And I was giving a Bhagavad Gita class in Vrindavan, and there was my god sister, her name was Pavati, and she corrected me because I was saying that those swells between one wave and another were only ten meters or so, right? And she said, no, 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 thirty meters. Can you imagine going up and down in such swells and such great waves? Srila Prabhupada was on this boat in that condition. And he came. Didn't matter. Prabhupada came. And what Prabhupada did, he was the transcendental gardener. He planted the seeds of devotion in our hearts. He planted. And then what is our responsibility? You know what our res Let's talk about the disciple and the spiritual master because this is very important for all of you. The spiritual master, <coughs> we go into contract with the spiritual master. He will never leave us. The spiritual master is the representative of Krishna. And he will never leave. Once he signs into contract, contract with the spiritual, his responsibility is he plants the seed of devotion in our hearts. And our responsibility is to also become a transcendental gardener because we have a seed now and we have to water it and we have to make sure there's no weeds because there's a garden within the heart and the, and, and the creeper it will grow through the process of bhakti it grows and that is our responsibility so when the spiritual master sees that healthiness, that, that, that shradha, that faith. Because if you look up the dictionary, I want to, someone to, to tell me, what does faith mean? What does it mean, really? Can anyone say? Believing in something? Yes, but how do we believe? Believe in something sublime. If, if we can't, like, we can't see Krishna, but we have faith that Krishna is there. So what what does that mean? Following the God. In an unflinching way. Unflinching way. Unflinching way. Yes. Yes. That's correct. Conviction. 
We have the faith through a conviction. <clears throat> Once Srila Prabhupada was asking his senior disciples in Hyderabad, how do you know Krishna's God? How do you know? And they were all suggesting things. Nati, 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 nati. Not this, not this, not this. And Shira <laughs> Prabhupada's disciples were getting worn out. Oh, what else can I think of? You know, oh. And there was this one sannyasi, his name was um, Mahamsa Swami. And he was sitting on the periphery of the group. And he was dying to say what was in his heart. But he was shy, very shy, sannyasi. And finally he said it. Srila Prabhupada, I know that Krishna is God because I feel Krishna when I'm chanting. You see? When we're having kirtan. Lord Chaitanya. Was Lord Chaitanya feeling Krishna? When he was chanting? Yes, of course. So, coming down in that parampara, it is a genuine process. It is a genuine process. Faiths. We see the material faiths. You know, when Narada Muni was traveling throughout the universe, he was going through the different planetary systems and he and he came to Lord Shiva's abode and he was saying to Lord Shiva, I've been sent um, because I want, I just, um, you're, you're a great devotee of Krishna and I've been told to come and observe your devotion. And Lord Shiva put his hands over his ears and he said, no, 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 no. don't say I'm a great devotee. Because if you do, I will fall from the Param Dharma. I will start thinking um, Dharma, Arta, Karma, Moksha. You know, I will start looking at religion as materialistic, me being the doer. Like that. So. <clears throat> We always have to remain transcendentally situated. And Shraddha is the very first place. Because it is by conviction we have this unbelievable, unshakably belief, unshakable belief that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It's all very well to read open Bhagavad Gita or Nectar of Devotion and start reading. But once we practice, once we start practicing, then the reality of Krishna consciousness kicks in. And Krishna becomes the most realistic person that you will ever meet. That's what happens. In London, Srila Prabhupada was preaching in in a big hall called Conway Hall. And there was this Buddhist lady. And she was dressed like a Buddhist. Very fine garb, beautifully. Not shabby and dirty, nice, beautiful cloth. And after the lecture, she said to Prabhupada, I know that you know Krishna. But how will I know Krishna? How will I know Krishna? <coughs> Prabhupada was silent and then he said, There's three stages. First stage is Shraddha. Shraddha. So this whole preaching forum has been set up in this temple over the days. There's still days to come, but days have passed also, from Shraddha to Prema. Prabhupada said that is the beginning 
of Krishna consciousness and have faith in Krishna. And the second one is a hypothesis. Does anyone know what a hypothesis is? It's a scientific process. A starting assumption. Yes. Yes. Starting point. Yes. And what? What? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So it begins as a theory, and scientists are very famous at theories. And and one theory, and then another scientist produces another theory to counteract that theory, and it goes on and on. It's a silly game, right? But this hypothesis was in relationship with the process of bhakti yoga. So what he was saying to the Buddhist lady was, Shraddha, and then the practice, the hypothesis of Krishna consciousness. Turn that hypothesis into action, practice. Practice, chan Hari Krishna. And then the third one is direct perception. Prabhupada says, you will see Krishna face to face. You will see Krishna. Just like in 6th chapter um, of Bhagavad Gita, it's described that if you have faith in the holy name, which is not different from Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, Hare Hare, The secret of advancement in Krishna consciousness is in the chanting of the holy name. Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Eva Eva. Allahu Nasteva, Nasteva, Nasteva. It's the only way. It's the only way. It's the only way. Keep chanting with faith and conviction. And the mind becomes conquered. And once you conquer the mind, the super soul is reached. You reach the super soul. Krishna is there. Just like he, Krishna said to, to Gokuma, you know that story? Does anyone know the story of Gokuma? Gokuma was just a simple cowherd boy in Vrindavan. And Sanatana Goswami, he wrote a book called the Brihad Bhagavatam Amrita, and it was about the exploits of Narada Muni, always observing the, the devotional service of, of great devotees, and crying in ecstasy when he saw the service being rendered, and then he'd embrace this, the person rendering that service and he traveled all over the universe and that was a beautiful rendering. But Gokuma was a very simple cowboy boy from Madura and he wanted perfection. He searched out perfection and he traveled through all the planets, he went through all the heavenly planets. He even became so perfect through his practice of Krishna consciousness, he took the place of Lord Brahma for X amount of for a hundred years. But he wasn't satisfied, you know. And he went to the Vaikuntas. He managed to go into the Vaikuntas. He still wasn't. He still wasn't happy. Really genuinely within the core of his heart wasn't happy. So then he finally entered the planet of Goloka Vrindavan. He became so perfect. And he was walking down this path. And he looked and he saw Krishna at the end of the path waiting. And Gokumar reached Krishna and he threw himself down, Dandabhats. And he was crying and shaking in ecstasy. And Krishna picked him up. And he said, 
If only you knew how many times I was standing in this path waiting for you to come. So many times I was standing here waiting for you to come. Krishna wants, he's desperate for us, desperate to have our love. Human form of life means that you prepare to be loved and adored by Krishna. That is, that, that's the only purpose of the human form of life. To develop yourself, to purify yourself so you can be loved and adored again by Krishna. When we chant Hare Krishna, eventually we will have Yasha Devi Parabhakti, Yasha Devi Tata Guru, Tasha Rite Katita Niyatha Prakasante Mahatmana. And that means that one who has implicit faith in both. Krishna and his spiritual master, all the imports of Vedic knowledge will be revealed. So again, we talk about Shraddha. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada had a temple in Bury Place in London. It was the very first temple in London. And again, just to show how advanced Sri Prabhupada was, he ordered the Pajari to, on the both sides of the altar, to put two seats. And they had to be very beautifully made and covered with red velvet cloth. <coughs> And we said to Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, why, why are you making these seats? I mean, have you ever seen, if you go to a temple, have you ever seen seats sitting, just being placed by the altar? Like as if someone was coming to sit on those seats. I haven't seen it before. Does, does anyone else? They're not. So Prabhupada said, during Arti, 7 o'clock Arti, because the Arti is just so beautiful. Sundar Arti. We had everyone was in union. There was maybe a hundred or so devotees. And when you come off Sankirtan and you've been distributing books and chanting for six, seven hours on the street, you come off and you go straight into Arti. Kiva Jayo Jaya Dora Chandi. It's a beautiful song, isn't it, right? And then we build up the, the momentum. And, you know, we're rocking, you know. Prabhupada said, Lord Brahma and Narada Muni come and sit on those seats. And they, they experience the auntie the joy that the artist is bringing. And it was, uh, it's beautiful. She had a problem with that. What's the time now at the moment, please? 8.20. 8.20. So, have we been going for an hour and 20 minutes? Yeah. Is that right? Yes. Look, we've got 20 minutes left. Well, that's what I was going yep. to suggest. Would, would anyone like to take advantage and share some information about their experiences in Krishna consciousness, because I'm happy to listen to that. That's beautiful. Or 
if there's any inquiries that one may have. I, I will do my best. I'm not, you know, there's so many things I don't know, so I'll try to answer your question. Tell, tell us something about Asakti also. Whatever you do. Asakti is basically, you have five direct loving relationships with Krishna. Neutrality, Dasarat, Servitude, uh, Friendship, Sakuras, Vatsalyaras, Parental, and uh, Conjugal Love with Gopis and Radharani. They're direct. But then you have seven indirect Rasas. But they're not in the mood of devotion. They're in the mood, they're in different negative moods, like Kamsa. Kamsa, all he wanted to do was kill Krishna. But yet, he, so, he's meditating on Krishna, but in a negative way. And can you imagine all the babies that he killed, you know? I mean, it's unheard of, isn't it? Can you imagine, I can't imagine the, the ladies here today as soon as the, you know, the baby comes out of the room, he snatches it, snatches the baby, kills it, throws it, bangs it on the floor. How demoniac! How can you? You can't imagine someone like that. Can you? What? But that's Kamsa. He was a demon. He was always thinking of Krishna. How can I kill Krishna? How can I kill Krishna? It's just like Arani Kasipu. It's like Arani Kasipu. He was so angry at Krishna because Krishna killed his brother, Hiranyaksha, as a boar. Because he was in the Gabar Ocean. Hiranyaksha was a very powerful demon. And he took the earth planet out of its orbit and it fell into the Gabar Ocean. So Krishna took the form of Varana, the boar. And he's fighting as a, like a boar. It's a funny thing, isn't it? When you look at Krishna's form, a boar fighting like that, this huge demon, you know. So Harani Kasipu was also very, very angry, very resentful demon. So these demons, when they get killed by Krishna, it's all Leela. Krishna doesn't have such a real in the spiritual world. So he comes into the material world. And Paritranaya Sadhana Vinisaya Chadushkrita Hama Samastapana Bhayo Sambhavana Yuga Yuga. That is the purpose. So he's pleasing his devotee. He's annihilating the demons and re-establishing religious principles. Even, even the battlefield of Kurukshetra was about that. There were 640 million soldiers that got, that got killed in the battle. It was the biggest battle over the last 6,000 years. 640 million and hundreds of warriors disappeared because they were using mis mystical weapons. It was an incredible battle. So that was Krishna again, pleasing his devotee, killing the demons, re-establishing religious principles. You know? So that's what Krishna does. That, that relationship between um, Hirani Kasipu and Krishna, it was all about cheating. That was a cheating Leela. You know, Hirani Kasipu thought, I've done it. Now I can live forever. Mm -hmm. Because he, when you think about it, Hirani Kasi was an extremely powerful soul. And he's only one ten thousandth tip of a hair in size. Don't forget his body. Hirani Kasipu is not his body, he's a conditioned soul under the influence of that body. 
But look at the power. How long did he stay on his tippy toes with his hands in the air? Does anyone know? How long is it? 68,000 years. How many? 68,000 years. There you go. Who could do that? So he, he, he mastered the yogic cities. He conquered time. He stopped time. And all the demigods and all the and all the, the different lokas, they were so much in anxiety because he was so he was like an invincible person and he was a demon. Demigods didn't stand a chance for him. But then Kadayu, uh, Prahlad's mother, she was running because while Hirani Kasipu was in meditation, trying to get those runes from Lord Brahma, the demigods took advantage and they, they were beating all the, the demons again. And they wanted to kill Kayadu because they knew that Prahlad was in the womb. They thought Prahlad was a demon, which he was. He was born in a demoniac family. But then the Radhamuni stopped them and says, no, 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 you can't kill them. I'll take them to my ashram. And he heard that. And that's how Narada really became perfect. So indirect, there are seven indirect relationships. Ashanti. Sisupal was also another one, although Lord Brahma killed him with a, with a little straw. Because he was envious. He was very, when everyone entered the assembly, everyone stood up and gave obeisances to, to Balaram and Krishna. But Sisupal stayed on his seat. So he was replaced eventually by Sudha Goswami. And Sudha Goswami spoke to him of Bhagavatam to the assembled outsiders in that arena. So coming back to the point, and I, I just want to say this last thing before, before other questions. Um, Never mind, I, I've just lost it. I've forgotten what I was going to say. What other questions, please? Well, uh, in Vrindavan, uh, uh, on Govashtami, you yeah. told a couple of stories okay. about how uh, <laughs> yeah. the Gaushala in Vrindavan had started. Yeah. Can you please hear some of them? Sure, just, just quickly. Look, I know it's sometimes it's difficult sitting for such a long time because I can see you know, people fidgeting. I'll try to be brief and then we can, you can probably have some prashana or get up and walk around, you know, it's good. Prabhupada, once the temple was built, uh, Prabhupada says, Krishna Balaram needs milk. My devotees are suffering, their health is deteriorating, they don't have nice milk. Gunanava built a nice goshal of Krishna Balaram <coughs> suggestion to Prabhupada. And it came out of Prabhupada's room, I think. One project after another, Prabhupada was giving me a wow, wow, wow. You know. And I thought, right. And I looked at my wrist and I had this Seiko watch. And in those days, it was a good watch. You know. So I sold it for 2,000 rupees. And I bought, I went to the Govardhan auction, the auction cars in Govardhan. And I went with Bhagaji, my friend, my father like figure. And we bought three cows. And we we had we we, we gave a gopa <coughs> forty rupees to walk those cows back to Vrindavan. And I was also building the Gurukul school for the students. And we had um, a shell. We had rooms that were just concrete. And that was the first Goshala. We used three rooms of the Gurukul on the ground floor to use as a Goshala. But eventually, you know, like it always happens, Krishna's always there, you know, as your best friend, as your, you know, Bhokta Ram Yagna, the Pasham, Sava Loka Maheshwara, Suri Dham Sava Bhutanam, Gatha Manusham Krishna's always in the heart. How can we not feel peaceful? You know? 
the stage is knowing me. 